Hi, this is Mike Manchin. Welcome to another tutorial in my series that I'm calling Shake is Money. How Final Cut Pro editors can use Shake now to make money while reading the manual and trying to figure out what Shake is really about. Today I'm going to give a brief uh, overview of the Morph node and how it uses shapes uh, with displacement of the pixels inside those shapes and, um, and a little bit of it dissolve to create the Morph effect. It's fairly simple and I think you'll find it effective in uh, any morph technique that you might want to bring into Final Cut Pro. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, this is going to be really simple because uh, I, I just want to give you the overview of it, but I'm going to do it with stills. So let's go ahead and open up a file in, come down and find my volumes, and I want to go to Zachary and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to keep drilling down until I find what I need. Now one thing that Shake does is if it sees images in a sequence it's going to think that you're going to want to bring them in as a sequence. Well, I, I don't want it to so I'm just going to check this off here and that'll open up my 1 through 5 PSDs. I'm going to load in 2 and 3 just holding the shift and hitting OK and that'll bring in two in nodes. Uh, so these two photos here I'm going to switch back or morph between the two of them. Now, since I'm going to eventually bring this into Final Cut Pro, I want to go ahead and try to get it uh, right now to the size that I want. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a little resize here. Um, actually, let's do a fit and change this to 720 by 480. Okay, and then hit F to bring it full size. And I'm going to copy this node since the parameters are going to be the same copy. And I'll just paste, slide it up, and connect it. Now this guy is also 720 by 480. Okay. Now all we need to do is bring in our um, morpher node and create some shapes. And then let the morpher node displace the pixels within those shapes and create our nice morph. So again, under transform, oh, under warp. We want to go ahead and click, let's get our first image fit node selected and we'll go ahead and click on Morpher and that will bring that one as our source image. And then we'll drag down the second image that will be our target image. Alright, double click that to make sure that all the parameters are loaded. Let's slide this up to give us some more room. Now, over here we have our uh, morpher toolbar here which is there's a lot of stuff in there again you can use the help uh, button there to bring up lots of information about the morpher node but let's go ahead and quit out of that for right now okay what we first want to do is select our time range so we're going to go to globals and I want my time range to be well, let's do it 50 I'll have it hold for 10 morph for 30 and then hold for another 10 so let's go 1 through 50 and then we'll click on our home to make sure that we have 50 frames down here in our timeline. And we'll go to frame 10 there for now. Alright, let's go back to our parameters for uh, the Morpher node. Now again, like I said, what we want to do is add a series of shapes. So when you do this, you'll want to try to get these shapes as good as you can possibly get them to cover the shapes that you want to generate using busy A handles etc etc I'm not going to do that because I want to again go through this as quick as I can delete that shape alright but what I want to do is just create some general shapes um, I want to do the eyes I want to do the nose and the mouth and the chin the face and the neck and the shirt and the hair and that will give me a pretty decent morph so let's go through this really quickly let's go ahead and corner pin oh click on our add shape let's go ahead and corner pin the eyebrows maybe three on the eyebrows just to give us the overall shape of the eyes let's get up in there be careful not to hit we can always adjust these later and I caught myself on the wrong side. Ah, that's no big deal. We'll just slide across there like that and close this shape out. Okay, now the Morpher node is going to add this shape and I want to call it eyes. Okay, 
then we want to change from our source image to our target image. So there's an easy way to do that. We can either click on here and say target image or F9 and F10 will uh, uh, toggle back and forth. So F9 will go to your source, F10 will go to your target, source, target. All right, so now that we're in our target mode, let's click on our shape and we want to come down to duplicate and connect shape because again what the morpher node is going to do is displace the pixels between these shapes so we want to uh, connect the shapes from one to the next and and that will give uh, the morpher node the place to displace those pixels in all right duplicate now if I right click it's going to give me the option to show all shapes and hide all shapes. Right now I want to hide the original eye shape so I don't end up touching it and moving it from the target or from the source image. So let's go ahead and move that, remove that. And then we'll move these kind of into a good place. I'm going to go ahead and hit Option, Apple, and then slide my mouse just so I can see a little bit better. All right, now let's go ahead and pin these. Again, remember kind of where we were we pinned the eyebrows and then the corners of the eyes the bottom of the eye okay, corners top bottom great alright I'll hit F to resize back to uh, full screen I'm gonna go ahead and hide all shapes oops that was show let's hide all shapes go back to my source image and let's draw another shape click down here on the create shape add shape mode and we'll do the nose mouth and chin now again you're gonna probably want to spend a little bit more time creating some decent shapes and especially if you have motion if you're doing this with uh, motion rather than stills because you're gonna have to keyframe the um, the shapes over time as it displaces and morphs so let's go ahead and get those lined up there all right again what we want to do is switch to our target so I'll hit F10 I'll copy this and duplicate the shape I'll hide shape 3 which I should have labeled as um, nose mouth and chin and then we'll go ahead and fix all of these again I'm just roughing it out but I found that this actually gives me a pretty decent morph alright let me go ahead and add a few more shapes and then I'll come back and I'll show you which shapes I did and how we get the morpher node to actually morph between the two. Hang on. Okay, well I've gone ahead and added a bunch more shapes as you can see in here. Let me turn them on. Uh, first we have the eyes that we did and then we have the nose, mouth, and chin. And when we come down I did a face node. As you can see I did a lot of... Uh, let me turn these off as we go through. On the face I did a lot of points around where I thought uh, the morph was going to need some of those extra key points. And so I just did a basic outline of the, sh of the shape of the face and the neck. And then I also uh, tagged a couple of key points, what I thought you know, were going to be a key shape in here. So the, I came back under the chin and then went mouth, nose, and eye and eye and back to the ear. And that helped close out the shape. So I did the shape of the face and then I also did a shirt. I put a lot of points in here because it's an open collar on the the uh, the next image, and so I wanted to have a lots of points that I could spread that out. Uh, what else did I do? I did a hair shape as well. All right. So all in all, I did one, two, three, four, five. I think five different shapes. Let's go ahead and get this to do the morph. First thing we'll do is we'll pick our first point where we want the morph to start. Let's go ahead and click on morphed image now. So, and let's go ahead and shape visibility. We will hide all shapes. Okay. I'm at keyframe 10 and I'm going to go over here to the parameters one of the morpher node and put a keyframe 
on the overall displacement. In fact, let's go ahead and keyframe general here. So I'll put a overall displacement and uh, overall dissolve won't because they're locked together. Displacement is what's going to morph the pixels in between the in the shapes. The dissolve is what's going to dissolve between things that aren't carried in an individual shape. Um, another thing to keep in mind too is in this case I removed the background these all have alpha channels because if you are morphing between two different backgrounds you can set a background uh, range that it will just dissolve in um, but it gets pretty confusing when you're trying to morph uh, changing backgrounds as well so uh, just for again simplicity of this tutorial I just removed it all in Photoshop and uh, we're just doing it against the black background. Okay, so the overall dissolve from 0 to 100% and the overall displacement from 0 to 100%. Sampling is, uh, this is how far into the subpixels it's going to go for the morphing. Uh, the default is 1, that's pretty standard. If you want to increase your render times and probably increase the uh, morph you want to increase that it slides to four but you can always type in more numbers if you'd like so I'll go to I'll just keep it at one all right I've set the keyframe for 12 or for 10 now I'm going to jump up to 40 and set another keyframe just by moving the sliders so I'll move the sliders all the way to one and that set the keyframe now if I jump into the middle of the tour of the timeline here you can see the morphed image now. So that's basically how this works. What you'll want to do now is render a flipbook. So let me just cancel. Make sure our bottom node that we want to have rendered is selected. And we'll render flipbook. And this will give us a preview of what the render is going to take uh, what the render is going to look like. Okay, well our flipbook has rendered here, so let's go ahead and play it. I'll use my greater than or less than keys to play through it. And as we watch it here, there's a few things that I want to look for. Um, the, sh the face shapes seem pretty good. There's a nice morph in the mouth. But over here, there's a little bit more of a dissolve than I care to have. And that's probably due to the... It looks like the uh, face shapes not adding, uh, lining up quite right so if we wanted to we could go back into here and edit our shapes and then we'll render it again and, and check it out alright so that's pretty easy let's add our file out node uh, image file out we're gonna name this actually let's uh, go ahead and find a volume that we want to throw it on so we'll find volume do 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 volumes and we'll throw it on Alex in our morph tutorial and we'll call this uh, morph uh, out we hit OK make sure that that's selected go up to our render oh nope sorry we bring our file format make sure that it's QuickTime codec options uh, animation if I want to go ahead and keep that alpha channel or let's go ahead and change this to 30 frames put it right into DVC Pro NTSC progressive 4x3 best we'll hit OK and then we'll go to render and file out node make sure this all 100 or all 50 frames and then go ahead and hit render next thing we'll do is import it into Final Cut Pro but I think you're beyond that uh, so I'll let you do it on your own. Again, I do want to make sure that everybody realizes that this is an oversimplification of the Morpher node. Uh, there's a lot that can be done with this, with motion and um, and roto shapes and 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 you know moving those shapes across time as the images are moving. Uh, again, take a look at the help. There's a lot of information in there. It's very easy to read. Uh, so. Good luck with it, and I hope you uh, hope to start seeing some morph morphing in your Final Cut Pro projects. Anyway, this has been Mike Mench, and I hope to see you on the forums.